told me, Ike, now when did you last led your heart aside? A whole new dish, a whole new dish of wet food, and some kibbles, and some treats, and then a nap after a hearty eat. Okay, we all knew I was gonna sing. Hi everyone, my name is Tamara Chambers, and this is Tamara Just Saw. And last night, I went and saw the live action remake of Aladdin. <clears throat> a few things before I jump in. I won't be spoiling it. There won't be any specific spoils. What a weird phrasing I just used. Also, sorry if you hear construction. My next door is being demolished and rebuilt, and it's very inconvenient. Street rats. I don't buy that. I don't enjoy it at all. I haven't so far enjoyed the live action remakes. They just have such a bad reputation now for just missing the mark, just being bland. I think the whole point is to reintroduce them to a younger audience, these classic tales, but just show the younger audience these animated classics. They're so good. And if you're gonna remake something and do it live action, do it like the lesser known things. We, we have Beauty and the Beast already. We don't need Beauty and the Beast because we have it. It's over here and it's better. I felt similarly with Dumbo, and I was going into this not expecting much. I love Aladdin. I grew up with it, I love the songs, I love the characters, I just love that movie with all of my heart. It's very near and dear to my heart, and I think it's near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. And I also went in having seen Prince Ali. They had this clip that they were showing yesterday on YouTube. <laughs> they were showing on YouTube. Have you heard of YouTube? They posted on YouTube, I think yesterday, uh, a couple clips from the film. And Prince Ali was one of them. And it's the first thing and only thing I saw before going in. And it's really lackluster. It's low energy. It's a terrible representation of the film. And I went into this not expecting much. And then... <laughs> Uh, I feel like I'm gonna disappoint a lot of people by saying this. I had the best time with this movie, you guys! Maybe it was that I was going in with such low expectations. Usually I blame liking a movie on my energetic audience, but there was like three people in the audience with my brother and I, and both of us were really not looking forward to it. And then the first opening song came on and they started singing and jumping around and doing like parkour in between buildings, and Taylor looked over at me and was like, is this good? And I was like, yeah. And then I spent the whole movie like this, just like. I said this on Twitter. It's not a perfect movie, but what an annoying thing to say. Good Lord. It's never going to top the original because the original is incredible. It brings some new things to the table, which I really enjoyed. There's a very epic song from our lead Jasmine and it's kind of in the vein of a, like a let it go like a very like strong song for for young women to attach themselves to and I think it was done well <laughs> I was talking to a friend last night who was like was it as obvious as like the girls assembling at the end of Endgame and I was like no it wasn't it wasn't it was uh, she built up to it <laughs> I think going in everyone was just really really worried about Jeannie because, we all know this, Robin Williams' portrayal of the genie in the animated Aladdin is in incomparable and it's in impossible to top. And it's just incredible. And I think instead of copying that, Will Smith decided to, to take a more chilled out genie approach. And for me, it worked. Are there going to be awkward moments? Yeah. He's like a 60 foot... CGI blue genie. So sure, there's some there's some awkwardness there. He's given it his all though. And that lackluster clip that a lot of people referenced on Twitter last night for why they weren't going to see it. What a misstep for them to put that out, I think, because that song was so incredible and he was great in it. And the energy was so so good. The lacklusterness comes from his more chilled out, but when it comes all together in the full grand epic song and dance number, it doesn't feel lackluster. It's just, it was a weird choice for them to, to post that. But anyways, 
he does have a more chilled out, cool vibe, like a very Fresh Prince vibe going on in his genie, and I think it works. Was the CGI bad? I don't know. I don't really care about CGI, so to me it didn't bother me at all. I really don't think it was that bad. Honestly, it seems like there was some jabs at other CGI things. I said this with Detective Pikachu, too. I think everything now in my mind is just a jab at Sonic. <laughs> Every single movie that comes out now is just gonna be a jab at Sonic. What do you got, Godzilla? Going in, I wouldn't have imagined this to be my problem with the movie, but I really didn't love Jafar. And I don't think that's at any fault to the actor who played Jafar. I think when you go in as a very attractive, young, beautiful, evil man, you're just not gonna, you're, you're not gonna get the same effect as this crazy, over-the-top, long chin mother fricker who is clearly evil and older and creepy from the get-go, whereas, like, you're attractive and, like, you just got evil, you know? It's a very different vibe that they cast than what the cartoon looks like, and that's I, another thing with the genie, too, is, like, these are all, these are just animated voices, and then we're seeing these cartoons, and so it's never gonna match up. It's just a weird thing to, you can't compare it, but there's no way for you not to compare it. So it's, like, it's just a weird, impossible ask, and it's so odd that they keep pushing for these live actions. Aladdin, the actor who played Aladdin, was so freaking charming and had such a good air about it. Like, she just was Aladdin. I think Jasmine was awesome. They really pushed for her to be even more uh, independent and uh, strong, but not panderingly, pandering. Lee, so? That's not a word. <laughs> With the animals, we've got Iago, Abu, and Raja. And I really liked them. I didn't know how they were going to attempt that. I know Iago talks a lot in the movie and in the animated film. And in this, they have a nice fun play with that, with him being a parrot. Abu was adorable. I said, ah, a lot of times. And Raja was also just really badass and cool. And, and yeah, they're CGI the whole time. But it didn't bother me. Again, the CGI really didn't bother me. The song numbers were fun, I think, comparatively. If we're just gonna compare it to Beauty and the Beast, which is, I don't know, I feel like that's what people are doing. It's these two beloved, like, princess movies. More so than Cinderella, I think. In my mind, at least. But Beauty and the Beast, I was not impressed with the vocals at all. I was bummed about them. And... They were great in this. Jasmine slayed. She slayed it with the vocals. Aladdin did a lot of talk singing, but he acted his way through it and he danced his way through it and it still didn't bother me. I was into the song numbers a lot and I love these songs so much. This brought back the nostalgic feels that I wanted these to do. When watching these live actions, I wanted to be brought back but just in a more grand way and this did that. It brought me back, it changed enough so I didn't feel like, oh god, copy and paste at a lower resolution, why don't you? It also just elevated it it was like that epic elevation of live action. One weird thing that I couldn't get over, was especially in the first song number, first and second song numbers, uh, there was just some weird camera work. It, there was like a weird effect put on it, and I think they were trying to maybe stylistically, uh, I don't know add style? <laughs> I think maybe they were trying to take the traditional dance that they were doing and add a, like, a, a, like a specific style to it and it was kind of like sped up and weirdly like jolty in places? That was super weird. I don't really know what that was. But outside of that, the dancing was incredible. And it was something that I didn't realize that I had missed from the first, from the original, the animated film. I didn't realize that I had missed like the traditional dance and the traditional uh, costuming. Oh my God, some of those dresses that Jasmine wears, or I guess not dresses, her little like floofy pants that are just iconic, we love. I just, I didn't realize every single person in the movie is wearing that. And like, of course they are in, in the animated too, but it's so striking to see it in person. I feel like I'm really apologizing a lot for liking this movie. But at the end of the day, I mean, I totally understand if you don't like the live actions because I never have up until now and it's difficult to give things a chance when when they've disappointed you five times. I loved it though. I really, I want to go see it again, which is crazy to me. <laughs> I would not watch the live action Beauty and the Beast again if you paid me. 
Maybe if you paid me. One jump ahead of the bread line, one swing ahead of the sword. I steal only what I can afford, and <laughs> that is everything. One jump ahead of the lawman, that's all, and that's no joke. These guys don't appreciate that I'm broke. That's a relatable, that's a relatable lyric. A whole new video. Don't you dare click away. Hundred thousand things to try. Don't hold your breath, it's I'm ten like minutes. I'm like a YouTuber. I sit on my couch and I talk a lot about my cats. Itty bitty living space. One jump ahead of the bread line, one swing ahead of the sword. I steal only what I can't afford. <laughs> that is everything. One jump ahead of the lawman.